We are going to go ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce Ms. Carrie Parks with Metro Care Services. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning. How are y'all? Good. So I am Carrie Parks. I am the director of IDD Provider Services. Um, very long title that just says that I um, oversee programs that serve individuals with intellectual and developmental uh, disabilities. You can go to the next slide. Um, who is MetroCare? <laughs> we are um, the Dallas, formerly known as the Dallas County MHMR. Uh, we changed our name many years ago to MetroCare Services. Um, we are a very large nonprofit that serve individuals with mental illness or intellectual and developmental disabilities. We also have a program specifically for veterans and we have primary care for um, children and, and adults within our clinics as well as pharmacies. So we're very holistic in our approach on how we, we serve the individuals in Dallas County. Uh, we serve over 57,000 unique individuals every year across all of our, our centers. We are in their homes, we're in the community, we're in schools. We're in dehabilitation sites. We're assisting them with getting uh, employment and supporting them while they're employed. Um, we are even doing um, homeless count every year and helping individuals who are homeless. We are the second largest uh, provider of housing behind Dallas Housing Authority. We have quite a few units that will serve those uh, either in transitional housing, uh, help them get stable and help them get into their own home. Next. So in my world, in the IDD world, we start at birth. We actually start with what we call our early childhood intervention program and we serve babies zero to three. Um, some of your children may have started in one of the ECI programs across Dallas County. There are actually three providers at this time. Uh, referrals can come for these babies from doctors, from daycares, from mom, from dad, from grandparents. Um, we've even had referrals uh, in utero from genetic testing. Of course, we can't <laughs> do an intake and uh, start services until after they're here, but we can start early. Um, the eligibility is determined on medical diagnosis, on um, audio vision impairment and developmental delay. Uh, there are very specific assessments that the therapist will use to say yes or no, this baby qualifies based on state eligibility. Next. So in our early childhood intervention program, we have a wide range of clinicians. We have physical therapists and speech therapists and occupational therapists and a dietitian who helps with uh, nursing and feeding issues. Uh, we have early intervention specialists who do specialized therapies. It is provide, services are provided in home, in the daycare, in our clinic. We do have a therapy center on site. Uh, it's very much in vivo. So, which means that the therapists are going to work with mom, with the caretaker, with the baby, show them how to do it. Because as we know, we're there for an hour, maybe two hours a week, and mom and dad have them for 24 hours, seven days a week. So if they know how to do exactly what the therapists are gonna do, then our babies are gonna thrive so much faster. Next. After age three, what happens? Well, in the state of Texas, in order to, uh, still qualify for public funded services, they must go through what is called our eligi eligibility and determination unit. They will take uh, do testing or they will take school testing and say, yes, this child is still eligible for, uh, they still qualify for IDD services. They do have a diagnosis, whether it's a, a, an IQ test below 70, uh, if it's a medical qualifying condition such as uh, cerebral palsy, or autism, or they may have other medical diagnoses that qualify them as uh, developmentally delayed. Uh, th that can happen at age three, that could happen at age 33. If an individual who is in the community uh, wants to receive public services, uh, uh, public funding in order to support themselves in the community, they have to go through our ADU. Once they've gone through and deemed eligible, they are assigned with a service coordinator who will link them with the resources that they are requesting uh, if, if they're available. 
So the service coordinator will meet, uh, review what services uh, could meet them. We have lots of behavioral services in the pipe. We have lots of uh, group home placements, but they also are in charge of monitoring the interest lists, and we'll go over those later in the presentation. Next. So after age of three, actually we can start at two and they can be referred from our ECI program. We have two centers for children with autism at MetroCare. We serve babies that uh, are recently diagnosed and on the spectrum. So they have a diagnosis of ASD. They may be intellectually, have an intellectual disability uh, or they have a qualifying condition that uh, they were referred to us from our EDU unit. So we'll serve ages two to 15. Uh, and we serve only Dallas County if they're using our general revenue funding. If they have commercial insurance, private insurance, they can come from anywhere into one of our centers. Uh, that is just one of the state mandates that we can only use our uh, public funding to serve Dallas County uh, residents with this program. Next. So in our center, I have board certified behavior analysts and registered behavior technicians that will do ABA therapy with the kids. If you're um, aware of ABA, you'll know it's very, very expensive for families to uh, get this service. It's anywhere from, in our clinic, we serve four to six hours with public funding. If they have commercial insurance, it's whatever the families can uh, request and can have funded through their commercial insurance. Our therapists focus on uh, communication Primarily, as you know, most behaviors, 98% of behaviors is because they do not have the ability to communicate. So if we can address communication, that makes them so much more successful. They focus on social skills, behavior management, adaptive li living skills. Uh, they, they can assist with toilet training. Uh, whatever that is going to help them be more successful and prepared to move into the school systems, that's what our clinicians do at the center. Next. If they have no insurance coverage and are requesting ABA, they have to go through our ADU unit to say, yes, I qualify for these services. The services will be referred from a service coordinator and uh, they will come into an assessment at one of our locations to see it, what the needs are. And our clinicians will develop a plan with the family on what goals to start with. If they have insurance coverage, they do not have to go through EDU. They can go straight to the front desk and make an appointment to get seen. Next. After uh, CCAM, if they don't, do not have ASD, or if they do, sometimes they age out, sometimes they're more successful and they just need some supports, but it's not intensive. Uh, they can be referred to our behavior treatment services, and we will serve ages three all the way to, to death at our behavior treatment services. Uh, they do have a diagnosis of IDD. They do have some sort of medical condition that qualifies them for services as determined by EDU. Um, I have licensed clinicians, licensed clinical social workers, licensed uh, uh, licensed professional counselors, behavior intervention specialists. They go into the home, they go into the schools, they go into day habilitation sites, uh, group homes, wherever this individual may ha be having issues. And they will work on decreasing that behavior, doing reinforcements for positive behavior, et cetera, working with the families, working with the caretakers. Uh, whatever the need may be, that's what our clinicians are going to address because the whole goal of our program is to help them remain in the community. Uh, Basically, uh, the behavior treatment services is about a one hour a week service. Uh, I, my clinicians may be doing group therapy. They may be doing one-on-one -on -one counseling for grief, loss, anger management. Um, they may be doing family counseling. Whatever, that may, whatever the individual needs to be successful, that's kind of what will be written into that plan. Now, also part of my behavior treatment services, we have a, a crisis a crisis program. So if we have an individual, oh, I think we can go to the next slide. I'm sorry. Intensive services. So um, we have intensive and crisis services. So if we have an individual who is at risk of being removed from their home because of aggressive behaviors or um, they're a risk to themselves and others, we do have a crisis program and I have clinicians that will work with that individualized, uh, the individual and family or caretaker, because um, some of these individuals live in their own home or they live in group homes. 
And so the clinicians and the BISs will work with them, uh, provide treatment, um, environmental setup to, to try and make them more successful in that environment. Um, for intensive services, they may be getting four hours a week of, of clinical counseling, or they may be getting four hours of environmental setup. Um, it just depends on the need. And as far as crisis, my team will follow them until they're stable and they've done a warm handoff into one of our other behavior programs. Um, crisis is supposed to be short term. They can refer to our crisis respite house. Sometimes it's not the individual that's in crisis. Sometimes it's the family that's in crisis. The caretaker may be ill and have to go in for surgery and there's no one else to assist. Uh, they may be at risk of being homeless and they don't know where their child's going to sleep that night and they want to put them somewhere stable while they are able to um, get a place for them to stay and make that a successful placement. Uh, there's many reasons why an individual or family may be in crisis and our crisis respite will provide 14 to 30 days of respite for that individual. Um, so there's many reasons that we could do a referral through our crisis team. Next. Our crisis team is also going into jail. So if one of our individuals is um, incarcerated or and he's about to be let out uh, we will help with transition out of there same thing if they have been placed in the state supported living center they will help uh, with transitioning back to the community because transition is always hard on our individuals next so very very important for a lot of our individuals is the interest list and um, the creme de la creme of the interest list is what we call our home and community-based services. This is a Medicaid waiver program. So yes, an individual must qualify for Medicaid in order to receive the Medicaid services. They do not have to qualify right now to get on the interest list. And the interest list is about 14 year wait right now. So if there is an individual or a family that says, I need services later in life, they don't need it today, they may need it today, but they won't get it from the HCS program unless they can get a diversion slot. Um, they can go and get on the list immediately and just say, I'm I want to be put on the interest list. They will call the EDU number and say, yes, I want to be put on the interest list for home and community-based services, uh, Texas home living, class, whatever their, their needs may be, but they can put on now without having to qualify. They don't even have to prove that they have a diagnosis that uh, qualifies them for IDD services. They can just be put on the, on the list. Now, when they get to the top of the slot, that's when they have to qualify for Medicaid. That's when they have to go through EDU and say, yes, I qualify for the service. But it can be done at age one, you know, or at one month. We, our ECI tries to get them referred over immediately because the wait list is so long. Um, so home, why is home and community support so important? Because it is the only waiver at this time right now that allows for um, residential supports. When I say that, it's, it has uh, the opportunity for mom and dad to be the foster parent after the age of 18 and get paid to care for their child at home. The state realizes that it is much cheaper for mom and dad to provide that service than it is for the state to put them into a group home or the state supported living center. And it's also just more successful for the family and the individual. Uh, it also allows if there's not a family member to support or you know the caretaker might pass, there's a group home opportunity. So the individual can go into a group home within HCS and in the HCS world, that's four beds or, or smaller. Whereas if it was an intermediate care facility like a state supported living, living center, it's six beds or larger. So it's a more normal environment. The group home looks like just everybody else's house in the community. MetroCare currently has three HCS group homes and it looks like everybody else's house on the street. And you, we have staff that rotate in and out every shift. So there's always supports. Um, if they want to live in their own apartment and receive supports from staff, you know, mom and dad, I have a teenage child who went off to college and I was like, is he going to be able to do his own laundry? Yes, I've trained him. That doesn't mean he's going to do it. And mom and dad can't be there 24 seven. Well, the great thing about HCS and Texas Home Living, if the individual does want to live on their own and they're capable and mom and dad can't be there 24 seven, we can write into the plan to have staff go in and assist. 
They can assist with doing grocery shopping. They can assist with doing laundry. They can assist with taking them to med, uh, medical appointments, picking up their meds at the pharma, pharmacy, et cetera. So the beauty of it is, is these waiver programs will support when they age out of school, they support when they move into the community. It, it's that holistic wraparound that families really, really need to be, to make sure they feel that their individual is safe. Next slide. So we kind of talked about residential services. Um, CFC, that's where we send staff into the home to work with them. They, it, even if the individual wants to stay at home with mom and dad, the staff can go in there and support mom and dad with the same services. If they want to help get them off of the bus because mom and dad work, they could be there at 3.30 to help get them off the bus, help them with their homework, help the, uh, give them a snack, help them do chores, give them their bath etc. There's respite because there's some families that, you know, they have three and four kids and they have an individual uh, that may have some aggressive behaviors and they want to be able to go to the grocery store or go to the movie with their other kids. They can have respite through these programs. Uh, we've talked about foster care. We've talked about supervised living and uh, the group homes. Next, community living supports. What happens after your child leaves school? Um, HCS and Texas Home Living will pay for day habilitation services. So once your child ages out of uh, the, the school district and they may not be going off to college, uh, they may not be able to have a job and you still have to work, you can uh, have the, the waiver pay for day habilitation. They go five days a week. The day habilitation focuses on a lot of the same things the school did. We want to make sure that all the hard work that the teachers did is uh, still successful. So they'll focus on ADLs, they focus on communication, they will focus on um, community. Uh, My Day Hab does a lot of volunteer work. Uh, they go to Brother Bill's Helping Hands and the food bank and uh, Goodwill. We, we believe that, you know, they need to give back to the community that as much as is given to them. So there's a lot, it's also a way of building pre-vocational skills so they learn how to sort and to shelve and, and, and to do basic work skills. So there's a lot of opportunities within Dallas County for DAHAB and the waivers will, will help get them there. Uh, another piece is supported employment. Individuals at age uh, in high school start to work on their work skills and they are referred over to the Texas Workforce Commission. Uh, MetroCare has a contract with Texas Workforce Commission. If your individual goes through and they have a successful placement and Texas Workforce says they're successfully placed for closing your case, well, the individual may still need supports. Uh, some of our individuals may need supports to, to hold their job for the rest of their life and the, the waivers will allow that. It will provide them with a job coach, with a, a supported, um, uh, sorry, an employment consultant that will be there on the job. As you know, transition is hard. If they get a new boss, they get a new uh, task added to their job, uh, the job coach can go in and support that. They can do a retrain. They can focus on the new skills. They can do a training with the staff on um, what that individual may need to be successful and help build natural supports within the work environment. The waivers also provide for nursing, uh, behavior support, uh, physical and occupational therapy. When the schools uh, are no longer in play, what happens with PT and OT? Uh, Medicaid can pay for it, or else if the Medicaid, get, they get a denial, then it would be put onto their plan through the waiver and that service would continue. Uh, speech and language, audiology, minor home mods. A lot of families need roll-in showers or ramps to, uh, in order to get some of their individuals in and out of uh, the bathroom and into the house. And so the waiver will pay for mo a minor home mods. It also pays for adaptive aids. Individuals may need things like insure or special shoes, uh, adaptive devices for communication, and, the, and that can be put onto the adaptive aids in their plan, and the, and the waiver will pay for that. In HCS, the waiver will give $2,000 worth of dental a year. Uh, in Texas Home Living, it's $1,000. So it's very important, you know, to keep up uh, with where everyone is on that interest list. And that's why I, every time I say this to families, if you're not on the interest list, that is something you need to do today. That's, that's your homework. That's your takeaway. You call and you get on the interest list today. Next. Texas Home Living is a, go ahead, go ahead. We're supposed to use the chat, I know. <laughs> is the interest list, is that that appointment phone number? 
we're, I, I have we're starting the process. Absolutely. That's how you would start that. Because I'm listening, but that's really what I have taken. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Um, Texas Home Living is a, a kind of a step down from our home and community support waiver. Uh, it does not have a residential piece. So there is no foster care and group home piece to Texas Home Living. Now it does provide all the other services. It just doesn't have those two pieces to it. You can have the community living supports that you can have staff coming into the home or into their apartment and helping support them. You do have day habilitation. You have employment assistance and supported employment and respite through Texas Home Living. You get the same therapy approach that you do in HCS. Uh, you get $1,000 in dental. Uh, you still get minor home mods, et cetera. Next. Another program is our career design and development. This is where our day hab lives. Uh, we are at the Lake West Family Y in West Dallas. Uh, our individuals there do a lot of uh, community interaction. They love going out and about. They, they plan their week on, well, pre-COVID, they plan their week on whether they were going to go for the week, uh, whether they were going to an Air Hogs game at one point or to Six Flags for the day, or they might go to the Arboretum for a picnic, at the zoo, out to eat. They love to go out to eat, um, go bowling, to the movies, whatever they, they want to plan for their day. Uh, they'll do that. They do a lot of volunteering. They work on basic life skills, cooking, cleaning, etc. Our, our goal is to keep them acting uh, within the community and keep them active and keep them progressing. We also have a vocational contract, like I said, with Texas Workforce Commission, and we have employment consultants that uh, work with individuals. We, we work with Project Focus with Dallas ISD. We work with uh, Project Search with Irving ISD. So we start them early, get them job skills, and get them working in the community. Next. I already did that one. <laughs> Next. Talked about they have. And important numbers to know. So if you're a child or you know an individual that needs services, there's all the numbers for the programs that we've discussed. The one to remember is for EDU. That is the most important that you could take away right now, and that's the 214-948-9950. Please, please, please call that number. Get on the interest list. Uh, if you need to qualify services for services because you've never received any kind of public funded service within Dallas County, that's the number to call. Um, if you can't reach anybody, that 743-1200 is our main number. You can ask for me. I've also, on the next slide, given my number. Um, other services that families might be interested in, um, we have a Cohen clinic for veterans that will serve veterans and their families, and that is up in Addison. So a lot of veterans uh, will go up there to receive uh, counseling for post-traumatic stress disorder or their family members may. Uh, we have primary care clinics in, at, at our, several of our sites. We have our pharmacy on site at our mental health clinics. Um, if families are feeling stressed, uh, we have a, a help a helpline right now. They can call 214-743-1215. That is our COVID helpline. Um, sometimes it just helps to have a voice on the other end to deal with the stress that's going on. And that's my name, my number. If you have questions, uh, even working from home, that number comes straight to my phone. So that way I'm always available. I, I will always answer my emails. Just Send me an email and I will link you with whatever service or put you in the right direction if it's something that is not in my department. Questions? I don't see any questions.